Hey guys, welcome back. I had some audio problems with the uh, last video, and uh, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully everything sounds better now. Uh, I want to thank everybody on all the feedback I got on the last video. Uh, I wanted to make this video anyway, but it, it was nice to hear, uh, you know, people actually wanting me to talk about the 4chan leaks, because it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, we still don't know if they're true, but, you know, they, they sort of make a lot of sense from just where modern game development, you know, is today. But uh, before I get into the different points, though, that were, that were leaked, I want to uh, make it clear where I personally stand on the uh, direction of the Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, what I would do if I was in charge of directing it. And, and that is, I'm pretty you know, puritanical about it, actually. I actually would prefer a remake just like the one you're seeing right now. A, a beautifully rendered, you know, fixed camera angles, you know, 2D pre-rendered backgrounds, the whole works. Tank controls, everything. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you can give the 3D style movement if you want. You can move the analog stick. But yeah, you're going to run into problems when you, when the, you know, you, the angle suddenly changes just like that. I mean, if you played the first Devil May Cry, it was like that too. Um, and the reason for that is when when a game is remade like the original with a few tweaks, uh, you know, this is the obvious example, Resident Evil 1. You know, it's great. It captures the feel. It adds some new things. It makes the experience new even for players who played the original. Um, Another great example, and another Capcom game, is uh, DuckTales Remastered. If you haven't played that one, that really kicks ass. It was, re it was actually, you know, the same exact game, more or less, with, uh, you know, if you added, you know, little features, um, and, and the original fucking voice cast from the original DuckTales cartoon, which is fucking awesome. It's something they could never do again, because um, I know Uncle Scrooge is dead, unfortunately. Yeah, I know, it's kind of a downer, but, uh, yeah, so, to take a game that was good the way it was and make it better, to me, was the whole point, and that's what we kind of wanted after we played, you know, this remake of Resident Evil 1. We were like, Capcom, that was awesome, could you do that with Resident Evil 2 and 3, please? That, that would be great. Um, the problem was, A, at this point in time... Shinji Mikami was like, yeah, it would be great if we could, but we can't because we have to actually put out Resident Evil 4 at some point. And a lot of a lot of you younger gamers don't even realize how long it was in between Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 4. It, it was actually a pretty, pretty long time. We weren't even sure if the next game was going to be called Resident Evil 4 or if they were going to do what a lot of games do and they'll put out like their trilogy and then the next game will have the title and like a subtitle. You know, like, like Mortal Kombat did after Mortal Kombat 4, actually. They were just throwing in subtitles. Um, yeah, because we had Code Veronica and then, you know, Dead Aim and Survivor. and We weren't even sure if the next game was going to be called Resident Evil 4. Um, it was several years. Uh, the first build of it became the first Devil May Cry. That's another story in itself. But... The reason Shinji Mikami wanted to remake the first game was because he knew that it did not the first game did not age well. I mean, he and he was right. I mean, have you have you played the original Resident Evil? I mean, it, it's you go back for it, you go back to it for laughs and you know and for the cheese factor, but you play that and then you play Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 2 was vastly improved and the acting, everything was, was just so much better and Shinji Mikami in hindsight was like, you know, I'd really like to go back and really make Resident Evil 1 the game it should have been. And that was the whole reason he wanted to remake it. And when you keep that in mind, you know, by that logic, Resident Evil 2 shouldn't even have to be remade because it was already a great fucking game, but of course we want to see a remake. It was a great fucking game, and we'd, we'd love to see what it looks like now in, in today's modern badass graphics. So if I was in charge, I would 
I would actually do not just was that what I described, but the 2D pre-rendered backgrounds especially. I one of the problems I had with the PS2 era of uh, Capcom games was uh, I felt like they relied too much on 3D, fully 3D environments. I mean, even Code Veronica, which the first you know edition of it was on Dreamcast use fully 3D environments and back then it looked amazing but you play it now even even an HD remaster and you know it hasn't aged well either but you look at the remake remaster and the Resident Evil Zero remaster and the, with HD graphics they look way better and because those 2D pre-rendered backgrounds are 2D and pre-rendered that that actually means you know the backgrounds aren't actually real. There's no physics there. There's no. Every, you're actually looking almost like at a static, frozen cutscene, pretty much. And that that was how a lot of that first generation, you know, like PlayStation One and you know games like that. That's they did that because it, it they could focus on the character models and not have a game that just looks completely shitty all around. And it was it was kind of it. It was a neat little trick. It was kind of like the fog in Silent Hill that masked, you know, the, the, the game rendering the environments because, you know, it wasn't advanced enough for you to see beyond the horizon. The, the fog effect was there to mask it all while, while the game was all loading up those environments. So it was, uh, it was hardware limitations, basically, how we got that. And on PlayStation 2, the only really games that did that was, like, Onimusha and Onimusha 2. And those games look amazing. And... When I played those games, I was like, man, it would be fucking great, you know, to get the next Resident Evil looking like this. The, the backgrounds look so much better now. The character models look so much more realistic. It would be great. But sadly, we, we didn't get any Resident Evil like that. Even Resident Evil Outbreak still used 3D, you know, fully rendered backgrounds. But, you know, they they just, they did look better than Code Veronica's. But still, if if... You can imagine what that would look like today. I mean, it would look fucking amazing. It would look like one of the CG movies, basically. And then all you'd have to worry about is uh, making Claire and Leon look how they look, you know, in Dark Side Chronicles, and you know, render those character models, and and you'd have a relatively awesome-looking game that would be cheaper to make, and you could put it out in faster time, and and then you know, do the few tweaks and, you know, maybe put a bathroom in the RPD, because you never had one. And, um, a few other things about the map were weird in that game, but, you know, just do do it like you did the first one. That's, that's my stance, that's how I would do it. Because, to me, it's, it's like, it's like when a friend who's never seen Star Wars asks you, like, what order they should go in, and, and they're, you know, compelled to go, you know, in chronological order. I always say no, that's a bad idea. Not for the obvious reasons, but because how I convince them is like is this. If you want to know how a Star Wars how Star Wars fans fell in love with the series, you should watch them in the order that they watched them in. You should watch, you know, four, five, and six and then go to one, two, and three. And you know, my dad actually disagrees. He thinks you should go in order, but I was like, Dad if you saw episode one first, would you want to watch the rest of the Star Wars saga? And he's like, yeah, no. And I'm like, exactly. So, you know, as uninviting as the tank controls and, and fixed camera angles are to the newer fans, you know, it's time to man up. You know, you grow up a little bit. You know, just try it out, see why we loved it, and you'll, you'll learn to love it just like we did. I mean, it's... Normally I'm very accommodating. This is this is one sort of uncharacteristic stance that I take. Um, because again, a work of art is a work of art, and, and what made it a work of art should be maintained. That being said, I I don't know what, what the remake's gonna look like. None of us do. And as soon as I see it, I'm I'm gonna go just fucking rock hard. I don't care as long as it looks great, as long as it kicks ass. That is all I care about. Ultimately, that that is just all I all I care about at the end of the day. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the leaks. I got it pulled up on my internet browser, so I can go by 
each one of them. Uh, the first one is that the remake is going to be over the shoulder. It's going to be kind of like Revelations 2 and Resident Evil 4, and you can aim and move, which uh, which automatically makes it better than Resident Evil 5. <laughs> I mean, I did like Resident Evil 5, but, you know, if you weren't going to stay like Resident Evil 4, that halfway point that it got there where it was kind of like shooter controls, but you can't move and aim, that, that was, that irked me a lot. So, cool. If uh, they're over the shoulder. Um, there is one thing to consider, though. Because, yeah, like I said, I, I prefer fixed camera angles. Even if you're using the RE engine and it would look great with fixed camera angles. I do want to point out that this will kind of give us an idea of what a third-person Resident Evil using the RE engine would look like. I mean... Unfortunately, we only have Resident Evil 7 to go on as far as what the RE engine can do. But imagine what a game that's, you know, third person over the shoulder Resident Evil would look like using that engine. Because before they were using, you know, empty framework. And the Resident Evil RE engine just, it looks fucking amazing. That is that is one thing about Resident Evil 7. But this will kind of give us an idea of what Resident Evil 8 will look like and and so in a way I'm kind of excited about that that I, I'm kind of consoling myself that at least I'll see what a Resident Evil a third person Resident Evil looks like in with the RE engine so that's pretty fucking cool plus who doesn't love staring at Claire's ass right there, there's that at least uh, but yeah so that that could be cool I'd have to see it in action, though. And, you know, being able to move and aim and everything, it, that's cool. But you are fighting primarily zombies, so it'll be interesting to see um, if the zombies are going to be hard to hit at all. Um, you know, theoretically, why not just headshot them? Sure, yeah. That would make sense. Um, but... I doubt it. I, they'll probably be more like the zombies in Resident Evil 6 in, in Leon's campaign, uh, which which I'm fine with, but again, they do want to stick to horror. They That is one of the things mentioned in the leak, that horror is still going to be a focus, so that'll that'll be kind of interesting. Um, the other thing it, it kind of you know brings to mind is if you recall the difference between Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2, is in Resident Evil 2, there were so many more zombies. I mean, like, investigating the Spencer Mansion and running into the scientists and shit that had been infected by the virus is one thing. But trying to get through a city, an entire city that's been infected with the T-virus, there were a lot more zombies in that second game. And... With today's modern technology and give the over the shoulder view, are we gonna are we looking at you know dead rising level levels of zombies? Uh, is it gonna be sort of is the horror gonna come in the fact that there's a lot of fucking zombies and you should probably get the hell out of there? Is is that kind of what it is? Because I know a lot of people say you know Resident Evil Four wasn't um, usually it's 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 in hindsight, but. They say Resident Evil 4 wasn't as scary. I think it was. I actually think it was. I think that uh, horror by swarm, horror by horde of enemies can be, you know, pretty intense if you do it right. And Resident Evil 4 did it right. And that's why that game was a fucking masterpiece. Because, you know, when you played Resident Evil 4 for the very first time, you know, you get through the first few Ganados and then you get to the village and then just, you're just up shit creek without a paddle. And... I mean, it was intense, it was horrifying, it was great. And you never knew what was coming next. And, and so, you know, Resident Evil 4 was still a horror game, but in a different way. It was still survival horror, but it was a different kind of survival horror. So it'll be interesting to see if the remake of Resident Evil 2 can pull that off. That, that, that'll be pretty interesting to see. 
Because that naturally leads to uh, the next bit of information, which is uh, RPD and Raccoon City have been vastly redesigned, um, which I'm cool with. Um, but it begs the question, you know, so, so what's the level layout going to be like? I mean, are there going to be a lot of zombies and you got a, you got a wider area, but, you know, more wrong directions to go? Um, are they going to take advantage of that? I mean, it, 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 it is one way to make it new and fresh again for even, you know, us hardcore RE2 vets. It's, it's, we, we don't know quite where to go. And if, I do hope it, it, it still retains a... You know, a 90s vibe, just for uh, authenticity's sake, because, you know, this game takes place in 1998. Um, and so I, I do hope you see, you know, maybe some phone booths and, and obviously typewriters. Um, although not a lot of people were using typewriters even back then, but, you know, you still saw them occasionally. Um, but yeah, everything's going to be vastly redesigned. It, it, it's kind of exciting. On the one way, I do hope they did. They are keeping some really art, iconic um, locations looking more or less the same. That would that would be nice just for posterity's sake. I mean, that that lobby, for instance, of, of the Raccoon City Police Station with the fountain and all. I hope that looks eerily the same, uh, but eerily different, kind of like uh, the mansion in the remake of the first Resident Evil, where it was sort of the same place but looked way fucking scarier and it would, be, it would be awesome I do hope there are some things about Raccoon City and the areas you visit in Resident Evil 2 that look strangely familiar you know what I mean that that, that would be awesome That so I'm, I'm kind of cool with that but again I, I do hope that there are some places that do look familiar that look like they were right out of the old Resident Evil 2. So the next piece of info we got was the fact that there are going to be only two campaigns in Resident Evil 2 uh, and the zapping system is gone. Real quickly, for those of you who never got to play Resident Evil 2, there were actually four campaigns um, possible in Resident Evil 2. Well, five if you count Honk. We'll, we'll get to him later. Um, there was Scenario A and there was Scenario B. So whoever you pick first is playing Scenario A. And once you beat the game, you can actually load your save file onto Scenario B and you'll be controlling the other character and you'll actually be playing uh, what that character went through while you were the first character in, in Scenario A. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you played Resident Evil 4, uh, any version of that game with eight as separate ways, uh, it, it would be like um, getting to pick Ada to go rescue the president's daughter and Leon would be, you know, doing what she did in the actual game. Um, it was kind of like that and you could you could see uh, how both characters um, reacted to things and, and encountered the same scenario but different. So similar to uh, Resident Evil 1, you know, Chris or Jill going through the same things, except, you know, they doubled it up. They actually let you, um, you know, play as the other character after the fact. I mean, it would be like if, um, in Resident Evil 1, if Chris or Jill, depending on who you picked, weren't uh, in a cell the whole time waiting to be rescued, um, but actually going around and investigating, you would, it'd be like that. Um, the zapping system... I, I hate to see that that it's gone because I, it wasn't properly utilized in the actual game itself. That was actually one of the only drawbacks about Resident Evil 2. Was yeah, you know, if you take the submachine gun in Scenario A, um, the character you play as in Scenario B isn't going to be able to grab it and use it. Um, there wasn't enough of that kind of thing in in the original Resident Evil 2. So it would have been nice to see it better utilized. Um, but at the same time, it might work out better because uh, one of the things we did here with this piece of info was that Claire and Leon would actually interact with each other more, which is good. I they didn't interact with each other much in the in the original game, and it would be cool to see sort of the budding 
relationship and friendship between Leon and Claire kind of, you know, develop for the for the first time. Even even though it's not the first time, I think that it'll be cool to see that. I think new and old fans will will like that. So that's pretty cool. And uh the only thing I worry about is uh whoever was your character in scenario B had uh more than just zombies to worry about. They had Mr. X. Mr. X is the uh, trench coat wearing tyrant, mass produced tyrant, um, that was the precursor to the nemesis in Resident Evil 3. Uh, in fact, the nemesis was, was based on uh, rejected concept art for Mr. X. Um, and this dude was a bad motherfucker, man. He, he, uh, he didn't run like the nemesis. He took a sweet fucking time. He was like the T-800 Terminator. I mean, he he, didn't, he wasn't in any rush to fucking smash you to bits. He was just there. And he was on your ass and he could smash through walls and he was terrifying. So, if there's only going to be two campaigns, uh, I'm assuming they're going to go with the canon route, which is uh, Claire A, Claire Scenario A, Leon Scenario B. Um, and Mr. X better be there. I didn't, uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that he, that he, uh, is because, uh, I think they would have mentioned that in the leaks that, uh, Mr. X isn't in the game and that would be yet another point of contention for most of us. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and assume Mr. X is there, but yeah, that, that, that's a pretty big deal with scenario B and, uh, that would bother me if he's not in it. Um, so, the other thing dropped, uh, which brings me to the crocodile, which we do know is out, which which kind of sucks, and, and not for, you know, the typical nostalgia reason. I actually have sort of a decent reason why that, that, that sucks. Um, when the first remake was made, that game became canon, and, and the original 1996 Resident Evil uh, was sort of retconned out of existence, similar to uh, Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. Um, if you notice in The Twin Snakes, Mei Ling and, and Naomi dropped their accents, okay? They, they didn't, Naomi didn't speak with a British accent anymore, and Mei Ling didn't speak with a Chinese one, so... And then, going forward, when you saw them again in Metal Gear Solid 4, they didn't have their accents. So apparently Twin Snakes was canon, even though it wasn't. That was kind of, it was weird. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil, the remake, the first, the remake of the first game was made into the canon version. And so the crocodile not being in the remake of Resident Evil 2 just means he's completely retconned. I mean, certain, like in Revelations 2, uh, Barry makes a mention of, uh, makes a little joke about opening doors, um, when he uses the crane to, uh, smash through the door, he, he says, you know, who's the master of unlocking now, which was, you know, a reference to that horrible line from the original Resident Evil, which was, uh, re which was rewritten in the remake, um, and we can forgive that sort of thing, because it's just a, you know, it's just a quip, it's just a, they could have had, Barry could have, you know, back when they were at, you know, the stars in the RPD, he could have called her that, we, we never know, the crocodile is, is more than just a, a, you know, a line, a piece of dialogue, the crocodile was, you know, a pretty big deal, yeah, he was easy, and that, yeah, it wasn't much of a boss fight, you just shoot the fucking gas can, and take him out that way, but, that was an entire event that we may be retconning out of existence, so that that kind of does bug me a bit. I have a feeling, though, that uh, the crocodile may have been cut for uh, story context reasons. I don't think they uh, intentionally set out to cut it or anything. I think uh, where they were going with the, uh, the story, it, it just may not have been time to put it in there, or it would have felt forced or out of place. So, I'll, I'll give them that. I, I have yet to see the game, obviously. Um, but if it seems like... If it seems like there was room 
I'll be bummed. But if it looked like there wasn't, then okay, fine. On to the next point. Um, Sherry is gonna be better than she was. <laughs> she, uh... That wasn't my be- my favorite part of Resident Evil 2. I mean, it, it was sort of a nice change of pace. It was kind of running around. But she's gonna be a little bit more like Natalia in, uh, in Resident Evil Revelations 2. Uh, she'll be able to defend herself a little bit, which is good. Which is good. I mean, technically Sherry's playable area in Resident Evil 2 is way better than Ashley's playable area in Resident Evil 4 but it was still kind of a pain in the ass um, so that's a good thing Ada Ada's gonna have a, you know, a much bigger part to play though it seems um, her areas have been expanded and she's gonna get better weapons um, fucking awesome I do also want to point out that, you know, in the original game, we didn't know Ada was a spy. But everyone knows she's a spy now, so they could actually go nuts with Ada's, you know, playable segment. Like, she could contact Wesker, maybe, who at this point we all think is dead, remember. Um, Anything could happen there. You know, cat's out of the bag. Everybody knows Ada's a spy. They could do some really, really cool things with... uh, with Ada's story in, in the remake of Resident Evil 2. That would be that would be awesome. I, I hope they I hope they go nuts. Okay, so the next point um, is no fourth survivor. So probably no tofu. Um, and that sucks ass. Um, they are open to maybe do it with DLC. And yeah, that ah uh, God, I'd hate to see that. I'd really hate to see that happen. Um, number one, if, if it has to be DLC, it should be free. Like, not a hero. At the same time, um, I could I could possibly forgive it being paid DLC if it is greatly expanded. If it's more than just a a little bonus mode like the original one if it wasn't just a like a timed you know race against the clock survival thing if they actually give give us a really good fleshed out hunk storyline you know maybe he starts off with his whole fucking team and gets slaughtered and and it you know it lasts longer than three or four hours that would if it's a full-on awesome expansion i'm thinking you know like like the dlc from the evil within the first Evil Within, one of the best DLC packages I've ever paid for. I mean, it actually really, it was cool. It was unique. It was different. Um, and you really got to got to see another side of uh, Kidman in that game. If, if the Hunk DLC is, you know, that, you know, expansive and, and cool and unique, if they really take the time to actually flesh out Hunk and get to know a little bit more uh, about the mysterious, you know, Mr. Death, as he's known, then, okay, maybe I'll pay for some DLC. But as it stands, like, you know that's going to rub a lot of fans the wrong way. I mean, even me. Okay, so the next thing is uh, saving. It's going to work just like it did in Resident Evil 7. Uh, infinite saves for the most part, but on a harder difficulty. Back to the Incribbins. I guess I'm okay with that. Not as big of a deal. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have liked it if it wasn't that way. But I don't really. it doesn't really bother me that it's not. And then, plus, if I really want to, I can play the hard difficulty. And hopefully there will be some unlocks there and deal with it just like with Resident Evil 7 um, I guess that means there will be auto saves um, on like a normal difficulty and that's fine I guess um, I'm kind of indifferent about that I'm cool either way but uh, the next really cool bit of information we got hopefully it's fucking true yeah, I'm, reasonably sure that even if all the other leaks are fake um, that this one's probably true 
Uh, costumes are back. Different costumes are back. Um, and one in particular um, is that we may actually get to dress Claire up as Elsa Walker. Fucking the unrealized, you know, storyboarded character from Resident Evil 1.5, you know, which I mentioned in my last video, the unfinished version of Resident Evil 2 that uh, they had to scrap and then start from scratch. Uh, it featured, you know, Leon, of course, um, and another character named Elsa Walker, who uh, was like a motocross racer who was going to, I guess, go to college in Raccoon City. At the worst time ever. Um, yeah, one of the changes they made, obviously, was Elsa Walker. They decided to make it her Claire Redfield um, as a means of connecting, you know, Resident Evil 2 back to Resident Evil 1, the sister of, of, of Chris. And it's kind of cool, too, to look at Claire's character in Resident Evil 2 and, and just her character now. I mean, that whole biker babe vibe that she has going on, I mean, you, you could sort of see that with uh, Elsa Walker she was like I said a, a motocross racer so to be able to dress her like Elsa that's just gonna be so fucking cool god I hope that's true I'm pretty sure there'll be costumes though I mean if the game's gonna be in third person there there will probably be you know unlockable costumes um so the last two things here on the list are uh one I'm pretty happy about, if it's true, um, the famous Rebecca Easter egg. You know, in the original Re Resident Evil 2, you know, when you when you get to the police station, when you get to the star's office in the police station, you uh, <coughs> you look at all the desks. You can see, you know, Barry's desk has the gun replica on it, and Jill's desk, and Chris's desk, and then when you get to Captain Wesker's desk. Um, you know, probably a million players who played Resident Evil 2 never never found it until, you know, they read about it in GamePro or whatever. Um, but if you inspect Wesker's desk 50 times, 50 times, you will find a picture, an undeveloped uh, film, actually. And there's a whole, you know, darkroom subplot side quest puzzle that you have to do and uh, you can use the dark room to develop that film and it's a picture of Rebecca Chambers in like a basketball uniform and one word on the back I think it was it just said recruit so I don't know if uh, Wesker just you know was a little bit of a you know Perv, or um, he was just looking for uh, easy marks for uh, for the experiments that would be going on in the Spencer Mansion. I, I don't know, um, but yeah, that was always one little weird, weird thing. I, I I I think it was probably I like to think it was the first thing because uh, in in the remastered Resident Evil Zero in, on Wesker mode, the way Rebecca's you know dressed up leads me to believe, you know, that that's how Wesker likes his women. I don't I don't know. But but that'll be cool. Not only that, um I don't know if the you'll have to inspect the the desk fifty times or not, but you'll find the film. Um Yeah, I'm pretty sure you don't have to inspect it. I think that's actually found in a trash can according to the leaks. Which is interesting. There's also something else. So I guess another piece of undeveloped film that that could be interesting. I don't know what that is, but be weird to uh, for that for the person who leaked the information to have made that up. That's that's weird, I, but interesting as fuck. I, I I hope it's true. I'd really like to see what else they're gonna do with the dark room in, in the remake. Cause yeah, that was that was kind of a cool thing, and that's also a really great way to pay you know homage to. To the original and, and kind of a shout to fans like yeah this was this was fun here's a little bit more so the last thing is uh, the release date um, no definitive actual date 
but the window, I guess, is for late 2018, and man, I, I can't really say much about that, because until we see something on it, we, who the fuck knows when we'll get it, late 2018, whatever, I guess it'll depend, if the, when they finally do announce it, when they finally do show us a trailer or something, if the game looks like it's pretty far along, then I, it's probably a safe bet to um, to assume it's going to be late 2018. But I also suspect, I'll go ahead and call it now, I, I also suspect that when they do finally show a trailer, they'll give us a release date. I actually think. Maybe not the actual day, but maybe the month or or it'll actually just say, you know, winter or late 2018 so there's that um that looks like that is it so uh i hope you guys uh liked the video if you did maybe consider subscribing giving a like at least um well i didn't expect this video to go on so long but yeah i mean i could talk about this shit all day so <laughs> there's that um hope you guys liked it um i will see you around um don't know what i want to do next uh video wise but uh i'll be you know mulling it over again thanks for all the feedback you guys are awesome uh, like i said i could talk about this you know for days but uh thanks for watching and uh we'll see you next time